everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Fashion Grunge Podcast. I am your host, Lauren. And I'm Mikey. Hey, Hey. this is Mikey's movie today. This is your selection. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this movie. I I, I freaking love it so much. I'm excited. We're doing Tank Girl from 1995, directed by Rachel Talalay. I'm just going to say that's how you say her name. I think so. Um, Yeah, I'm so fucking stoked. I'd seen this movie. I'll give my first impressions because they're probably shorter than yours. I'd seen this movie, I believe, maybe parts of it a long time ago. So I'm... I went into it kind of as a complete newbie that I hadn't seen it. And I'm so pissed that I've lived this long and not seen it a bunch <laughs> of times because it's awesome. And I want to buy it on DVD because it's so fucking cool. I love it. every outfit. I love all the music. Courtney Love apparently put together the soundtrack. So what the fuck? Why is she not putting together more soundtracks? Like, it was great. Better question um, is, why isn't she in it? <laughs> yeah, dude, she would have been a good, uh, she would have been a good, like, side character. Oh, definitely. A good cameo, for sure. But it was 95. This is probably right after Kurt's death. It was. I don't think she, she was touring, actually. Like, mm-hmm. That whole album came out, lived through this. So she was, like, probably still doing all that. One of the most, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, like, one of the most amazing albums Oh, totally. You know, and the hot take. Some people think that Kurt Cobain wrote a lot of the songs on that album, but really, yeah, a, it's a it's a conspiracy theory floating around. I I don't necessarily disbelieve it or believe it. I just that's just one thing that people said because that album is such a departure from the first one. Yeah, like the first one is really good, but that second one was like, okay, where did this come from? Like, right. why is this songwriting so great? Um, but I, I think that could just be through evolution. I don't think necessarily he wrote the songs, but he might have been a bouncing board since they were married or dating. So maybe she played him something, and that's that's maybe true. there was some feedback. But I don't I don't think he like wrote it and was like here like take this song and do it. But I don't know. Hmm. But it was awesome soundtrack nonetheless. Very yeah. So what are your thoughts? I loved it. So first impressions, I loved it. So what are what's no, your no, history? No, I, I love this. I. Well, it was funny because like when I was writing these notes yesterday or the day before, um, I don't remember my exact first um, introduction to the movie. It's just always yeah. been a part of my my existence. And really, oh, oh cool. yeah, I've had the DVD. It's very you, yeah, I've, I've, it's very you. Like the animation, like the comics in the middle. I was like, this is so cool. I love it all weaved throughout, and then how the evolution of the comics get even a little better. Mm-hmm. that makes sense like more tighter and more colorful um but i've had the dvd forever i mean it's so old <laughs> yeah have you had it, did you have it on tape i i don't know if i've ever had it on vhs or anything like that i have no i don't have the soundtrack but um yeah, I, I, I i've downloaded them individually does that make sense oh okay um, cool yeah the song. um but every now and then i like pull it out as like a background movie or just like that's great. Well, I'm cooking or something like that. But Lori Petty is fantastic. She's from A League of Their Own, I believe. And Point Break. That's what I know her from. Which one was Point Break again? The one with uh, Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze. I haven't don't, seen that all the way through. Don't tell, oh, you haven't? Mm-mm. Oh, it's so fucking Embarrassingly good. enough to say, I haven't seen it all the way through. Oh, yeah. But isn't so this like good. her first, this is her first leading role. Yeah, because in Point Break, she was, like, the girl. Like, she wasn't the main character. Right. She was Keanu Reeves' like, love interest. But, yeah, she wasn't the title role or anything. So, yeah, this this probably is, right? Yeah. And then, She's I mean, even cool. though, even though like, in certain points it's poorly acted, it's just fantastic. It's and then, funny, though. It's, like, yeah, campy. <laughs> it's very, very camp. And I love, like, the very first, and I know we'll get into it later, but, like, the very first a scene like she's going over the dunes with the what's it? it's an ox or something water buffalo yeah and, like he has the mask on <laughs> i know it's so cool i was like this is this is actually super perfect that the last one we did together was fifth element right and now we're doing tango because they're like <laughs> apocalyptic futuristic like weird like it's really cool that they're kind of in the same genre i love all that stuff like yeah mad, cool. mad max and yeah this that, is you know super mad max very super mad max vibe this is supposed to be in australia yes even though she doesn't have an australian accent but it seems like everyone else does no, except but, for um, Matthew mcdowell he doesn't but yeah i mean he's british right yeah i think so <laughs> yeah. yeah 
But Naomi Watts, like, I didn't even know Naomi Watts was in this. This has got to be her. I totally movie. forgot. This is her first right? movie. Yeah. Her yeah. Movie. Wow. That's cool. She looks the same. Yeah, I know. She looks exactly <laughs> the same. This is what, 25 years? Fuck. I, I need to know her diet. <laughs> I know, right? And she was married to what, Leah Shriver for a while? I oh, I didn't know. They were married that. or oh, they wow. had kids. Yeah, I know they were like together. Oh, wow. Oh, very yeah. cool. Cotton weary. <laughs> <Cotton weary. laughs> that's all. That's always how I see him. I was watching Ray Donovan the other day. I was like trying to get into that show because one of my friends told me it's really good. I haven't quite gotten in in yet. I'm just kind of starting. Yeah, it's 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 cool, but he's the main character, and I'm just like cotton weary. <laughs> that's all. That's only what I see of him when I see him now. Yeah, like, that weary. or uh, if I can show my comic nerd side, uh, the very first saber tooth in X Men. Oh, no, yeah, sorry. no, the Logan second one. version, not the uh, first one, the second Wolverine. Version. Yeah. Yeah. Was he in the Wolf- He's the one with Wolverine, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, he had that big coat on. He was kind of yeah. hot in that one. The, the first uh, Sabretooth was like a wrestler or something. Mm. I did see that one with the X Driver because I remember when he had that big, like, wasn't he in the Arctic? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he had that, like, giant, like, kind of a uh, revenant looking. He didn't make a bad Sabretooth, but yeah, it's either Sabretooth or Cotton Weary for me. <laughs> yeah, right? That's totally what he looks like. It's really funny. It's like really, really fun. <laughs> um, so wait, so who's in this? You have a, a list of who's in it. Yeah, I mean, it's not a lot, a lot of people, but it's like a lot of famous, uh, famous people. So Lori Petty, like I said, from League of Their Own, and um, Point Break. Point Break. Thank you. Um, Ice T, who is like the lead. Oh, pastor, that's right. The leader of this like kangaroo slash man experimental group I like can't captain america called. gone yeah. wrong <laughs> yeah like, um, kind of naomi watts malcolm mcdowell is like the ultimate villain he's yeah. amazing in everything he does iggy pop who's like who's like that that skeevy ass dude in the um in that one scene what is the it called? liquid, like, silver, liquid silver. silver yeah, yeah. and um this girl named anna this woman named agna magnuson Mag- Magnuson, who's like the madam. I know. Um, and- oh, wait, hold on. Side note. So I'm looking on yeah. IMDb. Lori Petty's in Orange is the New Black, which I don't yeah. watch. Did, it's- did you see her in that? Oh, yeah. It's fantastic. And she plays like oh, okay. crazy, like the government is after me, like conspiracy theorists gone wrong. Oh, like, cool. she's- But she has a backstory and I can't remember it. That's cool. But, so yeah, she's she- but she's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah, she's in Poetic Justice. What? I forgot. Yeah. Uh-huh. I haven't seen that in forever. Yeah, I'm just looking at her IMDb. I, I vaguely remember her in that. But, yeah, so I, I we were kind of making it seem like she hasn't done anything since. But <laughs> if you look at her on IMDb, she's done a lot. It's just that I haven't seen the more recent stuff that she's done. But, yeah, she's still doing she's, stuff. She's fantastic. Her energy in almost everything she does it's so cool. It's just beyond amazing, yeah. I love her and, voice. And, like, even the director and the costume designer was just, like, she had so much energy. She was up for anything. Yeah. You, couldn't, you couldn't tell her no because she was, like, I'm going to do my own stunts. And she did, like, maybe 75% of it. That's cool. Or something like that, yeah. That's pretty dope. I think she probably did the surfing in Point Break. Like, I, that's probably the only, like, stunt that she really did. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm equally, and now I'm really jealous of Lori Petty for two reasons. One, because she got to work with Keanu Reeves in, like, 1991. Yeah. And he just was, like, awesome. I mean, he's still awesome, but that's so cool that she got to work. And also, she, uh, Tank Girl, super cool, would have loved to have been in that movie. And also, those two action movies that she was in were both directed by women. So that's fucking dope. Fantastic. Yeah, that she was in, like, these two cool, like, action films that are different but still like women, women. women driven i mean yeah which is cool know. super cool that's why like you need to watch wonder woman because it's also yeah, by it's woman bad. too and it's just like i was telling you the other day um what was i saying oh yeah like um it just it, it's it's so organically done too and it's better it it's the better oh, wonder of, woman uh, yeah sorry it's the better of the dc movies yeah, the DC haven't been. Not really. Yeah. I, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm still kind of, on, I'm on the fence about this new Batman, but everybody seems to be like all for it. I love my girl Zoe Kravitz. Don't I'm, know if I love her as a Catwoman, but we'll see. I'm in it for her, to be honest. I'm in it yeah, for her. Yeah, I, I think I would be. And 
and Paul Dano as the Riddler. I think I'm more I'm more interested, honestly, in villains because they're just more interesting characters. Yeah. Um, unless they do something drastic with Batman, but they can't go too off script with him. I mean, they can't make him like a completely different person because it's no, like and- he still has to have the same vibe. Well, and from what I know, from what I what I've seen and what I've been told um, online and offline is that they're going in the more of detective the detective Batman comics. So he wasn't very fully Batman, Batman. If that because he's sense. the youngest one, right? Isn't he going to be the youngest Bruce Wayne we've seen? Yes, as a like grown man. Yeah, yeah, because he's like early thirties. Well, how old was Bale supposed to be? Like mid thirties, mid thirties, yeah, yeah, like mid thirties, late thirties, yeah. I guess. Same with but, Kilmer. Val Kilmer was kind of young when he did Batman Forever. Batman he Forever, wasn't like yeah, super old, but I guess yeah, he was still Bruce Wayne though. He still had the company, <laughs> and I like that one. I kind of want to do that one because I love that Batman. <laughs> we should totally do that one. Yeah, we should do that one at ninety five. I, I mean, it's cool. It's really campy, but I really like. It. I mean, it's got Jim Carrey. Well, and that's what I was going to say with um, Tank Girl is that so not only did this come out and this was based on a comic book, but Batman Forever came out the same year and so did the original Judge Dredd with uh, Sylvester Stallone. So it was like this comic outing, but like a battle too. Yeah. Of like who would win, you know, like, and this, uh, this movie tank girl sorry um cost like five million to make but only earn like less than a fifth of that no 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 it cost right? 25 25 i'm make. sorry my bad yeah i was like five shit yeah. no 25, 25 yeah but only like did Six. so little in Six like million yeah yeah didn't do very hot so but it's a cult but, classic but now, it's a cult though. Classic. and it's um it's getting more and more famous like just beyond its years like yeah. there's more even more comics are still being made to this day of Tank Girl, which is amazing. Oh, is there? Oh, yeah. that's cool. Um, which I've actually never read, so this is going to make me want to read it, you know? Yeah. Has it been going on since, or did it stop? It was, it was in, I it think, Tank Girl was in a magazine, like an old magazine called Deadline, not the one that's the Hollywood one now. And that's where it first appeared, and then then that's what the movie came from. But I wondered, and then that magazine went out of business in like 96 or 97. So I wondered, did it stop, or... I was wondering, did they continue it? So I was just looking it up and they stopped mid 96 for a little bit. I think um, it was changing companies to this company called Penguin. Anyway, they restarted it and then re-released recently. um, You know how like they remaster like cartoons and movies Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So they remastered like old comics and made them a little more like... um, like digital, digital like, and yeah, animation, tighter, right? the animation's better. Yeah. So recently they're working on a five issue miniseries to come out in 2021. I'm not sure if that's new material or, or old, just remastered. Oh. It doesn't say, but it's published by Albatross, uh, funny books. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Or will be, will be published. I should say. Oh my God. That's so cool. I kind of want to read the comic now. I really do too. Yeah. It looks and, really um, cool. The one of the, I don't want to say dumb, but like the dumber kangaroo man dude named Jeff Corber. Yeah. Um, he's in he, Buffy. Do you know who he is? No. Oh, Buffy no, is. I, no. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's that, he's that badass vampire that she has to fight when she turns 18. No he's in that house. Really? Yeah. No That's way. Jeff Corber, who <laughs> also used to be married to Kelly Catrone. Oh, I think. yeah. The, you know that woman, the one from Top Model? No, no, yeah. she's a PR, a fashion oh, PR, PR woman. Right. Yeah. I don't like I believe, her much. <laughs> Yeah, well, she's she's okay. I mean, she just tells it like it is. But um, I think, hold on, let me double check. I'm pretty sure that she was married to him. Cober? Is it Cober? I think it's Cober. K-O-B-E-R? Yeah. Yeah. I'm That's pretty funny, sure he but he actually in yeah the comic, they were married in the in the comic he actually is um Tank Girl's uh, boyfriend. Oh, okay. Now is he still like a half kangaroo, half mm-hmm. dog? Oh, no, he was a dog, right? He was a dog that was really well that got upgraded to a human. Yeah, right. He's so Someone. cute in the movie. I love him. I know he's really <laughs> cute. He's really like dumb and funny. And I like the um the preachy saxophonist. Yeah. Wait, who is that? He's the guy. Is he the guy in the crow? 
The guy who's um which, okay, which crow? The original crow, the only one that matters. Of course. <laughs> Hold on, let me look. Okay, his name is Reg E. Kathy. I think oh he died in twenty eighteen. Oh. Oh, he's in Fantastic Four. He's Dr. Franklin Storm. In the you new know? one? Uh the one from twenty fifteen. Yeah. Oh, the reboot. He's oh. also in Luke Cage. He's James Lucas and Luke Cage. Oh, wow. Oh, that's right. He is in House of Cards. He also, okay, let me see. Wait, there's something else. The Crow. Let me see what year was that. No, he's not in The Crow. Oh, he's in Seven. With Brad Pitt? Yeah, he's a doctor. Oh, he's like the autopsy guy. I haven't when seen they, that movie in so long. They made a TV uh, series about that, didn't they? 12 Monkeys. Oh, 12 Monkeys. They made a TV right. series, which we I think we were talking about doing. Oh, also big ups to Brad Pitt. Today he turns 57. Ooh. I was talking in the group <laughs> chat when uh, one of my friends was like, I would not mind even now at 57 to be with him when he's right. like 80. And I'm like 60. I was like, oh yeah, I'd still get with him at 80. He could <laughs> like, get it. Oh yeah. He's still, <laughs> his personality is so great. Like he just seems yeah. like he's really fun, you know, to yeah. be around, but he looks amazing. It's kind of unreal. No like problem. it's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's funny. He's not in the crow, but that's so funny. <laughs> Who else is? In- oh, I also heard that Bjork was supposed to be in it, and she turned the cameo down. Yeah. So the the redheaded lady that um, has all the all the stuff from Tank Girl's um, base. Oh yeah, yeah. When she come- the crazy yeah, the crazy lady. Back, yeah. I don't think she actually had a name. So Bjork was actually supposed to be that girl. Um, but even before, and we were talking about this, like why Courtney Love wasn't in it. Uh, Courtney Love was supposed to be her, but then oh. because of Kurt Cobain's uh, passing and everything, couldn't do it. So they asked Bjork. Bjork was like, no. But like you said earlier, Courtney still banded all the artists together to make an amazing soundtrack. Yeah. Um, so that was interesting to read. I can't, I mean, I love Bjork. I, I, I know a lot of other people do too. Hopefully. Um, yeah. But, I, think so. I think if you're a I fan of totally, the podcast, yeah, yeah, I could, I could totally see her in that role. Totally. This other woman, I don't even remember her name, but she did an okay job. Actually, there Isn't was it Cusack. Isn't it like, Something the Cusack, Cusack yeah. Anna Cusack. Is it the yeah. Cusack woman? Is it like one of the Cusacks? I was like, trying to look uh, that John up. Cusack I, I and the other one was like Joan. There, I was trying to look that up, um, and I couldn't find a relation. But. And yeah, let me look. Joan up. Cusack, yeah. Debbie. Yeah, Joan's the sister. <laughs> Debbie from the Adams Family Values. <laughs> oh yeah, do you know I read something that? Um, oh yeah, it's another sister. She's a oh, sister wow. of John Joan, and there's two others. Um, also, I read that I just I didn't read. Uh, this is actually not real news. This is just a lie. But I just saw a thumbnail on YouTube. So I haven't watched the video. But apparently, they said that that Tim Burton wants to do Adam's Family, and his only caveat is that he wants to have Johnny Depp. He has to have Johnny Depp. I heard about that. Yeah. So I was like, oh, please give someone give Johnny Depp a job. I feel like he's getting <laughs> fucked over right now. Yeah. Like, right. Someone get get what's him out of Tim what's Burton. Movie that he was in uh beasts fantastic beasts oh maybe? that's right yeah 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 the last I, one I, I saw those two yeah yeah i did i saw the second one that he was actually in he was in like the end of the first one like mm-hmm. they just showed his face and they were like oh shit he's gonna be in the next one and they were both good but they got him fired off that thing now mads mickelson's doing it his role that danish guy the one who was in dr strange mm. who was like the bad guy Oh yeah, the gray. Yeah. yeah, the grayish long hair. Yeah, and the guy was in Hannibal, the oh, TV God. show. Yeah, the TV. Show. Finish that. I haven't started. I started it, but another one that I really want to watch because Michael Pitt's in it. And I love Michael. Oh Pitt. yeah, yeah. I really want to see that. I heard it's a really good show. It's like, a, it was like, yeah, it was like um, why did people cancel it? It was like a big deal when they canceled it. Oh, yeah, Justin like, Justin Ben watched it a couple months ago, and he was just like, "Oh my god." Yeah, yeah. I heard it was good. I kind of want to see it. Um, but originally, um. The actress who was supposed to be Tech Girl was this actress named Emily Lloyd, but mm-hmm. she, she made up a big stink about not cutting her hair. <laughs> so she, how she could you let go? Yeah, yeah, damn. Like, no, how could and that was not? interesting to see, and I was like, or interesting to read, and I was like, why? I mean, it's just hair. 
And it's a fucking dope ass movie. (laughs) I think that's why, like, I secretly loved watching Top Model because I liked watching the girls cry when their hair got cut off. And that was the biggest thing. If you rewatch, like, now there's so many videos on YouTube that are like, Top Model's so problematic. It's fucking crazy. But, like, every time they did, uh, like what do you call it makeovers i feel like tyra specifically knew that she was trying to break people by cutting their hair because some girls she wouldn't she would make them like get extensions and they'd have these long hair but it was like the girls who were like really overconfident Mm -hmm. that she would like be like okay they came in the meeting like the like what do you call it the like try out like oh i'm so good like pick me like we're gonna cut her hair and see if she's like still like it was like a psychological thing because it really broke most of them they were like crying and Tyra Freaking was like out. the Grinch in the corner, like with a big grin on her face. I'm going to break her. <laughs> and then the worst of all was when she would go, you're getting this, you're getting that, you're doing like whatever. And then there'd be like the last girl and she's like, what are we doing with you? <laughs> uh, like she didn't figure it out because she like kind of forgot about this one girl. And then she's like, yeah, you just can stay the same. And that was like even worse than having a dramatic like change because it was like she didn't even think about you like you weren't even on her radar to even come up with like shaving your head she was just like whatever (laughs) the only time i really really felt bad for the girls in top model and i guess more recently as i'm watching like the guy ones um when they put when tyra and her team put them in like cold ass weather when they went that one episode where they put them in the pool yeah that one girl was like shaking, Didn't shaking out of the hospital or something. I yeah, how like. did they not get? I don't know how they managed to do that because like, that's like that's, not right. Like you Tyra, you did not do that this. Far. Like yeah, and you did not do this, Tyra. You act like you're you're making them do everything you did, right. so they have to suffer. I doubt you were in like a pool like this or if you were like i mean that's and then stuck. and then she gets pissed because like they didn't get a good shot well i mean yeah the model's gonna die if yeah they're shaking like yeah. what are they supposed to do it's kind of nuts insane but insane it's super <laughs> nuts it's like go back and watch and see how much of a train wreck that show really is now oh, no. like years later and, and all the girls go on these like youtube lives with people and they talk about what really happened i was watching one with shandy from season, I guess, like, two or three, one of the early ones, that she was talking about, like, what it was really like. Like, we're in those judging rooms for, like, 10 hours until they show up. Like, it's not, like, how you how it looks. So if you're interested in top model shit, there's tons of shit on YouTube where all the former <laughs> girls talk shit about what happened, yeah. how they're treated and everything. Yeah, it's really nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I have another really interesting note. Uh, Catherine Hardwick, who is was the production designer is the production designer for this film. They Rachel really wanted her to do it. And the studio didn't want her to because she didn't had never done it before, Mm -hmm. but she's dope. She's a director. She's the one that ended up directing 13, which I just did a little while ago. She did Lords of Dogtown and she did fucking twilight. So she's like actually like a big director now, but it's so cool. She did production design because those fucking sets are so oh, dope. Like so, cool. so dope. Like inside the tank is dope inside her lair. When you first go, when you first meet her and you I see all of her lair. friends that and boyfriends, amazing. so fucking cool. I was like, who designed this? This is so amazing. And I was like, Whoa, Catherine Hardwick. Thank God they stuck with everyone. Like this movie seems like one of those, like everything fell into place. Like Lori Petty was obviously made to do this. Yep. Thank God that other woman didn't want to cut her hair. Right. And then <laughs> Catherine Hardwick, thank God they stayed with her and said, no, we want her to do this. Yep. Like she's going to do it. And then Ariane Phillips and Tony Gardner as fashion, like fuck amazing. The and whole. then Courtney Love doing the music. Like it all kind of just really worked out. There know? were some dramatic moments that i i heard for like back stuff but it like you said everything just fell into place yeah we can't tell because it looks great right exactly <laughs> right yeah, exactly. it doesn't look like oh shit i don't want to do this but i'm stuck doing it so yeah um yeah do you have any more behind the scenes stuff i have just a little bit um, yeah i was gonna say the um it was filmed mostly in the arizona desert and parts of la Cool. Um, and white sands i think too which i really want to go to in new mexico it's yeah. like where all the sand is white like that yeah it's really cool um tank girl's attitude it uh was loosely based on a group of friends that um jamie hewler lived with during the uh last year of art college um, oh cool which was kind of interesting um ice t the rapper that's in it um, was the first rapper that hewlett ever worked with and he actually has a song on the soundtrack yeah he does yeah I was gonna say uh, I heard it. 
And then what else did I say? It was like Ice T. Um, a reboot recently of Tank Girl is no. stated to be in development by Margot Robbie's company, Lucky Chap. No, starring Mar- you are not. Margot you were Harley Quinn. You can't bring Harley Quinn to Tank Girl. Well, okay, so that's what Justin. We were talking about that earlier, and he was like, "Everyone's just gonna see Harley Quinn." I get that. Yeah, but I'm quasi. She interested. would be good just I because mean- I love this movie. Yeah, I do too. I love I love Margot Robbie. Don't get me wrong. I think she's fucking dope. I think she's so cool. But I want like, do they have to reboot fucking everything? Like, there's so many comics out there. I'm sure there's a comic book that has like a feminist kind of icon that they could use. You know, like, I don't think this is the only one. And this is so like, the thing is now if they made this, it would just be so CGI. Like it, it would have to be not. made like the most recent Mad Max that was like minimal CGI and just like dope trucks and like used everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I fucking love that movie. Like that's the only way I would really enjoy it if they made it as less CGI as possible and just had like a massive amount of like budget for like sets and trucks and like all that and you didn't have to like computerize it in because that well, kind of kills it. Well, that's funny too, and it's a it's a side note that I had, but. I read in some article online that there was n- for the the kangaroo for the kangaroo people. I can't remember what they called rippers. The rippers, um, yeah. They said that they had like mechanical eyes, but I'm rewatching this movie and rewatching it like three times in the la- in the last two days, and I'm like, those are real eyes. So yeah, those are their eyes. I don't Just understand. Uh, yeah, I don't understand where they came up with like fake eyes but you know if they do tank girl just don't do the same story just make it like a continuation a continuation exactly. yeah i don't want to see like the same thing happen or like them change it like just make because she doesn't die so they can usually just (laughs) make it like you know go go on well especially if there's like and this is my problem with marvel too is that like if they (laughs) well no i mean if there's material out there use that material that's on the pages yeah that's true so it's like I mean, I love the Marvel movies, don't get me wrong, but I would just like to be on a table reading because like some of these people are like, oh, let's do this. Let's do that. And I'm like, it's right there. If you're out you. there, if any Marvel <laughs> listeners or people who work for the Marvel co- Corporation, hire Mikey as a consultant for your table reads. Don't hate me. Come after me to hire me. <laughs> yeah, just have him there so that he can, uh, you know, give his notes on like, how everything should be worked out and like continuity because they they have they've got a job man they've got to make sure yeah. i guess all the movies like interlock as yeah. well as having, oh, yeah. like because they've got so many comic book fans who know like word by word what happened what didn't happen so they can't fuck it up they can't pull dc now dc's like whew, at least we're not number one we can afford to like fuck this up because marvel's <laughs> the one that's like they're they can't fuck up they're like in first place so oh, if yeah. they fuck up it's a big deal then they can come from the back and maybe like dc can like their second phase they can like knock everything out mm-hmm. but i mean that's gonna be a lot if they i don't know if they could do that i think they're so far behind marvel's got such a leg up already they got tv shows and all this shit just coming out you know yeah well, so excited idea. for Loki, though. Big up for Loki fans <laughs> out there. He's got a TV show coming out. Oh, my God. So much. Like, WandaVision, She-Hulk, uh, Loki. What is it? Oh, Falcon another, and Winter Soldier. Another hot piece of uh, news. Apparently, Tom Cruise is now dating Haley Atwell, a.k.a. Peggy from uh, Captain America. No shit. Agent Peggy. Isn't that her name? Peggy Carter? Oh, is she in that show? She'll have, she'll have yeah. She'll have, yeah. like... Another story, just like what's her name about Scientology? <laughs> oh God, don't say that. She's awesome. like a whole I'm big sorry. rant on set but the other day. Everyone's speaking of that. Tom Cruise. Did you hear about him the other day? Yeah, I was gonna say that rant that he had on set. Yeah, because like there's there another it. Mission Impossible. It was on the news. Like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like getting all this like protocol stuff about COVID and he's like berating them. He freaked out. I mean, I understand, I understand that like, you don't want the movie to be shut down. Like I get it, but I mean, follow the rules though. Don't be so (laughs) don't like, I think George Clooney made a statement too. And he was like, I get his sentiment. Like, I understand you don't want the movie shut down again, but like, just be a little bit nicer to your crew. Like don't berate them and be like, you're fucking fired. If I see that again, you're fucked. He's like, come on, dude. Like, 
I get it that you got all this on your shoulders because you're producing it and you know, the money's coming out of your pocket and all, I mean, like we get it. It's a serious thing, but like bring the drama down a notch. Don't <laughs> like, be, Don't be Christian Bale. <laughs> but see, okay. Christian Bale's was a little bit weirder because his was not like a pandemic. He just like no, freaked out on some dude. PA. <laughs> He's, was that on he's Batman? Yeah. Yeah. He was on Batman. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. He just like freaked out on some dude. It wasn't like they're breaking the rules and there's like, like Tom Cruise had a reason, but the <laughs> fact that he's tied up into all that fucking science, oh, shit, like, oh my God. It, we can't even get into that. That's a whole other podcast for well, a whole what is, other day. What is that actress's name? Leah. Leah Remini. She just came out with a Netflix thing. Oh no, it's been on A&E. I've oh, seen all it? that oh. shit like three years ago. I'm obsessed oh, okay. with all that shit. Oh, I guess yeah. they're, they're just they just put it on oh, Netflix. Yeah, okay. but it came out a few years ago. Oh, yeah, because gotcha. yeah, she wrote like she wrote a book too. and Yeah, she's very adamant about getting people out of this fucking cult. Oh, God. Disguised as a religion, apparently. <laughs> but allegedly, who knows? Allegedly. <laughs> who knows? Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, what else do you have on? Do you have any more behind the scenes shit? I don't. That's it. Let's get into the meat on the fucking yes. fashion, dude. Ugh. Okay, so Ariane Phillips and Tony Gardner really outdid themselves. It says Tony Gardner, but all the information I found was a lot of quotes from Ariane Phillips. So I think yeah, me too. She was like the major like spearhead behind it. Well, um, I think she she said sorry. Um, she said that she collabed with the designer Rick Owens as well. Oh, one of my ultimate favorites. And when I read that, I like shrunk. I was like, oh, Rick Owens. I don't. I've never embarrassingly i've never heard of him he is really big in the fashion world but i guess not big like in regular life like he's not like tommy hilfiger okay like he never made it like that big but he's like a high fashion designer very avant-garde works in a lot of neutrals blacks grays does work in colors yeah he's from la oddly enough but he lives in paris he's very much like a european style designer Mm -hmm. but he is american he's super dope he's kind of hot He's got like this long, yeah, it, like a hot in a really weird alien way. He's like super fit, <laughs> like no, he's super fit. Well, no, because he's not like. I'll I'll send you a picture of him. He has a partner too. This woman that he's partners with is like a lot older than him, but she's fucking dope. Like she's like a goth version of like Erica Badu. Oh wow! Yeah, like she wears a lot of black. She like paints her her thing like the top of her fingers black, and then she has like these dope like jewelry. Like she always wears tons of rings. I think she has like gold teeth. Like they're just like a fashion iconic couple. Like I think she's like his muse. So to find out that I think the first outfit that she has on in the film with the jacket, yes, um, when she's in the with the on the buffalo like that, I think he helped collab with her on that one specifically. I, that whole outfit is amazing. It's I mean, all just so every cool. single every time she thing. switches and you don't even know why you're like she's in another outfit again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even even down to like I know it was very plain but cool at the same time. Like her boyfriend's tattered shirt over the shirt. Oh, he was super Dang. hot. Oh, super hot. Super hot. I was like, I love how this is supposed to be 2033, but it's like n- grunge. Right. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> it's like literally much. 1992, but just like less like an apocalypse hit. Right. <laughs> like that's where the, the line of fashion stopped. It was like, it stopped right there. And then it's like, it's really fucking cool. I just love it. I mean, I loved her, her dice earrings. Yeah. Those were fantastic. They're all so cool. Like I, I kept writing down all these notes, like ripped army tang, tube socks as arm warmers, that candy necklace that she had right. on in the beginning, that yeah. blue prisoner outfit when she cut it up. And it was like, she had like those men's briefs on and then she had like the cut pants over it. And then she cut the prisoner shirt in half. Right. And it like was just so cool when she had the red bra <laughs> on. Like, yeah, there's just so many. Like, um, that whole scene, God, in, yeah. Uh, that whole scene in the silver, the liquid silver, where yeah. um, that robot is like, "Well, if you follow the rules, you should look as so." And then she just like, <laughs> she busts out. She just comes out in that hole. Like, I love that. So cool. I was like, this is awesome. I love her. I think she had like those briefs on with rhinestones, mm-hmm. like fishnets, combat boots, that black tank with the safety pins, like all on just that bottom corner. Which I thought were really cool. That's one of my favorite scenes when she tries on all those outfits yeah. in liquid silver and she keeps popping out. And I'm like, these are all so cool. Like I want a room just like that. Reminds me of Clueless. <laughs> right. She's trying the little computer. Fashion on the computer. Yeah. It's like, this is so cool. Yeah. Same year. Yeah. 
which is so so rad um i have so many the yellow shirt when she has that ripped long skirt the polka dot ribbon in her hair oh yeah it's like white with the the red stripe or the red polka dots i like jet girl's corduroy crop two-tone jacket that was pretty cool she has on throughout most of it i think she's wearing the same thing and then at the end she has on that flying cap with the goggles yeah and like the fur thing like that was really cool um yeah, even, that even like the Ripper's outfits were were cool. They were really cool. I like how Ice T had like the bandana on over his ears. Yeah, like it was cut and done over. And the who? I think it's the who tank top. I think so. The bullseye, and then I think he also had it. Uh, the guy, the oh, guy that his boyfriend was with. Or yeah, that guy. I think he had it on in like the last scene. I was like, oh, so he has it on now. I think it's the who. Uh, Let me Booga. make sure it is. Booga. Yeah. 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 I think it's the who. Yeah, I think it is the who. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, that's so rad. That's so cool. <laughs> um, the bra with the missiles. The furry yeah, oh, arm okay. ha- army helmet. I uh, love it. Oh, I love it. It was it looked like grass. Yeah, it did. It was so cool. And then, and then the, the end, Adam's the feather. last one. Huh? Oh yeah. What are your faves? Oh no, no, no. I was just gonna say the Madam's feather dress was amazing. Yeah, that was really cool. I like all the liquid silver dancers. Yeah. They all some had them, really cool shit. Some of them were like interesting choices, but like they all meshed. Well, fifth <laughs> elementy, uh, yeah. but I guess this is before Fifth Element, so mm-hmm. Jean Paul Gaultier probably got that style. Oh wait, I have a really good quote. Yeah, from the creator, Jamie Hewitt once put it: "She was Thelma and Louise before the fact. She was Mad Max designed by Vivian Westwood, Action Man designed by Jean Paul Gaultier, yeah. which I think is really cool. That's like exactly." I, I'm going to put that quote in, in the show notes for the description <laughs> underneath the title. I'm going to yeah. put it because it totally like exactly encapsulates her perfectly. Oh, no, it was it, it's totally fantastic. I love it. It's so cool. I love the, the last outfit. She has green pants and they're like chaps. I thought they were yeah. like regular pants, but they're chaps and she has the red shorts underneath them. There's just so many elements to her outfits. Like if you keep watching, like I'm going to watch it again because there are going to be so many things I miss, like just looking at her outfits. You know, oh, like, yeah. And I, and I know this is very simple, but it was elegant at the same time where her and Jet, they come in to the water and power and they're like mm-hmm. taking the pictures and she's like pretending to be like some kind of like hoity toity fashion designer. My favorite like, scene. Uh, yeah. When she's like Anna Wintour. Yeah. Right. <laughs> she like comes With a handkerchief through. over her head. And, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, I love how they don't even question like who nope. is this I know. <laughs> what is she talking about? We're doing a calendar. Yes. And yes. Then I, I love how she's like, she keeps changing Jet's name. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. So funny. And then she says like realness. Real yes, realness. I was like, oh my god. I was like, that's so funny. She Even before like, that became a big tagline for everything. <laughs> I know. Yeah, she's like definitely ahead of the times. Like this movie is very could have been made now. Yes. Like it's so cool. And 2033 is fuck. Not even that far. I know. It's <laughs> like, 2021 soon. Yeah. <laughs> we're closer to 2023 or 2033 than when this film came out. Right. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> we're going to have to shower in dust. Oh, de louse. Fucking shit. Oh. That was pretty awful. With the vacuum. Yeah. But oh. that was like one of my favorite scenes too, just because I love the Portis head song. I was going to say, yeah, Portis head in that mm-hmm. shower. That's that, what I wrote. That's what made me so like the two artists, Portis Head. Yeah, I was gonna say let's move on to music unless you have any more. Yeah, yeah no, more fashion. No, 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 no. okay, okay, cool. Let's move on to music. So yeah, what but, did you think? Um, no, and that the soundtrack, like I said, uh, is fantastic. But like the two artists, like uh, Portis Head and Bjork, mm-hmm. this movie really made me dig into those two artists. That's awesome. I was just like, okay, let me see because I love their, I love their voices. Yeah. And even though as crazy as Bjork is, as we've learned throughout the years, she's her so she's visually like intelligent, um, all the orchestrated stuff that she does with like people and their voices and everything is just she's it, like no other. No. No I mean, other. No other. And I like, really can't even think of anyone close to her. No. And that other song that she has, not Army of Me with a Oh Big Time that, Sensuality fantastic that video oh. very very ren and stimpy-esque as well 
Wait, the one of Army of Me is the one where she's in the tank. Is that for Tank Girl? That, I'm not sure if that was specific. Like, I wonder if or... she did that video. Let me see if I can find out. Yeah. Because, yeah, it seems like... Because that, that video is where she's, like, in a tank. And it's all, like, weird. And let me see if there's any... Um, if there's any, like, description on it. Big Time Sensuality is cool. It's that one where she's on the back of the truck. Mm-hmm. And it's going through New York. Yeah. I think it's that one. It's, I think it's that one. And that's the video. Let's see if she has. It's all cartoony and everything. And um, it's cool. Like an inchworm or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. It's just completely bonkers. It's amazing. Um, but like, I love how the, the movie opens up with Devo is the girl you want. Mm-hmm. And I then. Who sang that? It, well, it's Devo's song, but there's a girl in that song, and I don't know who that is. Yeah, they redid it, I think. And I, I think it's like a remake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like like I told you earlier, Ice-T has a song on there. Hole has a song, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, Iggy Pop has Wild Thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's not, obviously it's not Cole Porter, but his, <laughs> his song, Let's Fall in Love, is in there. She performs it, but at the end, in the end credits, it's uh, Joan Jett. And Paul Westerberg. Thank you. Replacements, yeah. Yeah. So, like, I mean, uh, every song is placed so organically. And I think I've said that before for something else. But, yeah, it's amazing. My favorites were Richard Hell and the Voidoids, Blank Generation. That's, like, in the beginning. Yeah, some didn't make the soundtrack like they always Yeah, that one didn't. Um, I like Bomb by Bush. Mm-hmm. Like an old Bush song that, that was in yeah. there. I love um, that. Yeah, I have the whole Portis head. Uh, I think Beowulf does like Keep Your Two Cents in. I don't remember. I don't remember. Or two, it's called Two Cents. Yeah, it's, it's a cool name. Um, I mean, it's a cool song. I have your, oh, Veruca Salt, the song Aurora. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. that song's really cool. Um, Ice T, Magnificent Bastards has a song who is the side band of Scott Weiland from Stone Temple Pilots. Oh, cool. And also, that's Mockingbird Girl. And also L7, another dope grunge all girl band called Shove. I've heard, I've heard of them. I, they're I dope. Like, heard actual oh, yeah, they're albums. So cool. Yeah, they're so great. I think uh, Dave Grohl used to date one of the girls in there. Oh, cool. Maybe was married to, like in the early 90s. Mm. Yeah, I knew there was like a a continuation there but yeah it's such a fucking great soundtrack i'm gonna have to link that in the in the notes Definitely. like if you want to listen to the soundtrack i'm sure it's on spotify i'm sure someone made like a playlist or something oh yeah but it's great yeah it's it's probably one of the best soundtracks i've heard outside of like a gregor rocky film who has like my favorite soundtracks but i think it's great for like kind of not unknown but like a big film like a budget film that has a very specific soundtrack that's not easily sold you know, usually they have like kind of poppy shit because they're trying to make money. But this was like right. a very genre, like grungy, like electronic. They've got Bjork in there. They've got Ice oh, yeah. Tea. Like it's cool. I mean, and then to have someone like Courtney Love in charge of collaborating all those people. Why doesn't she do this? She needs to like do for she so, needs to much, do so many movies. Oh God, yeah, yeah. If this is like something that she was a fluke and just did a great job at, right. like, <laughs> has she, I'm, I'll have to look it up and see if she's done any more. And maybe we just don't know because I didn't know. I thought she just had a song on it. I had no idea she put it together. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. Well, because even though it was a crappy, sorry to say, crappy sequel, the what was it crow not city of, no, city of angels, angels? Um, yeah that was a she had she has gold dust woman on there right with oh, yeah, she does yeah fantastic that soundtrack actually is not bad that soundtrack fantastic, the best that that soundtrack is amazing um mm-hmm. so i wonder if she was in charge of something else i mean i know she I has a, a song on there but was she in that movie oh she was um, if she was a, in it she might a have a bit part and i can't remember what what it was i haven't seen in a long time i know she has a bit part in it though i refuse to watch it (laughs) i mean like you said earlier the first crow is the only one that matters it really is and then wasn't didn't rob zombie do the third one did he he either directed it or produced it yeah i I I get it i get it I get that they want, like, it's always a different person, though. Like, it's not Eric Draven. It's, like, someone else. But 
<sighs> and then no. they were gonna it was rumored within the last couple of years that they were gonna redo it with uh no, this dude Momoa. who played Aquaman. Jason thank god, Momoa. thank god that was a rumor. Thank god. Yeah, I think it didn't work out. Well, thank god Aquaman and also like this is another like pandemic blessing, is that some things that probably shouldn't have been made are probably not gonna be made now because it's just too much of a risk. Like they don't know if anyone's gonna see it. So he does Aquaman, fucking go do Aquaman. Mm-hmm. Like that's gonna make money. So that was pretty decent. I haven't seen that. I don't like uh, Amber Heard at, like at all. Who is so I like refuse to watch it. The one that Johnny Depp used to be married to. Oh, oh right. She's like a shit actress. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't like her. I'm not a fan. I she was okay in like Machete. Machete. I, oh God, I can't so wait. For the she third was one. in that. Oh, yeah, the space one. <laughs> yeah. Whenever that gets made, I, mean, I know. Yeah. Whenever anything gets made now, I mean, oh, fuck. Yeah. Well, here's you the thing know. too. Is that and I think I said this in the last podcast that we did, but um, Wonder Woman two comes out on in the theaters and on HBO Max uh, on Christmas Day. Christmas, I'm right? So yeah, excited. that's exciting so though. Yeah, but they, filmed, what, they were talking about it before. Yeah, they filmed it here. But what, it here. Yeah, but what HBO Max is doing, and I think you or Justin told me, is that they're only releasing it for thirty days. Oh, I see. And then it's going to continue on in the theater. So oh, okay, well, if people still want to go to the theater, yeah. then they can. But yeah, damn, it's crazy. But I was like, yes, I know what I'm doing Christmas Day. <laughs> I know it's a new world. <laughs> I think Christopher Nolan got really mad about it because his movie didn't do that well. That Tenet. Oh, it was I want to come out in the theater. I know. I want to see. You have like a really big TV. I have like a a small TV, so it obviously would have been better to see it in a theater. I get it, but he's just really mad that people aren't going. I'm like, dude, there's a pandemic. You can't expect I, to get the same amount of money <laughs> that you were gonna get in a normal circumstance. Like that. I mean, you couldn't plan yeah, it. it was, yeah, nobody planned it. Like you could have held on to it, pushed it back till next year, but. I mean, I don't think they want to do that. No. And I mean, it's crazy. They're already doing it with like certain things, like Black Widow. <laughs> they they still haven't released that for some what reason. Black Widow is is. Oh yeah, April. I saw a trailer the other day. It said May first, but I was oh, like, no, where in theaters wow. or like at home? Like, I don't think things are going to be back to normal by May. I hate no. to break it to you, I don't think people are going to be going into theaters if there are any left. Like a lot of them are going to close up, probably. Oh God, what was it? Um, one of my neighbors today. It's not a theater, but um, a well-known restaurant over here, Hula Hands, <gasps> shutting down completely. <gasps> yeah, the meatloaf. I know, right? Oh, <laughs> I need that recipe before they close down. <laughs> oh my God. Damn, yeah. Man. yeah, but yeah, they're closing down forever. I didn't even know they still existed. We haven't had one in the city for quite a while. There used to be one on the Pike, apparently, but I don't. And there used to be one in Chevy Chase. I don't remember it being there. Like on That's, so crazy. That's so crazy. Yeah, right by Mazda Gallery, like mm. where that Neiman Marcus and shit. It was like over there. So weird. Yeah, that was a long time ago. That was like when I was like twelve mm. or like thirteen. Like it hasn't been there for quite a while. Oh, that sucks. Oh, R.I.P. Yeah. Meatloaf. Right. <laughs> It's really good. Um, so what are some of your favorite scenes and lines? So I've got a few more I know than you I do. normally have. Cool. Um, <laughs> Hit me. Okay. The um like I like I kept telling you earlier, the opening scene is fantastic with the water buffalo mass over the both of them. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's it's very mad maxi. Um and then when she's being taken away um at, by the hot the water and power soldier asks, what else do you like? And she's like, hot oil, vacuum attachments. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I don't know. Something about that was just like fantastic. And then he's like, the moment I feel teeth, you feel lead. I know. <laughs> and oh then, um, why are they always being constantly sexually harassed? Yeah, it, it, no. <laughs> and then, um, when, <laughs> like... when she's talking to jet later and she's like, the tank isn't what? Come on, just one little adjective and we'll have a whole sentence. The tank isn't <laughs> glad, mad, sad, lonely. <laughs> <That's so funny. coughs> Excuse me. Just their their whole like banter back and forth is is fantastic throughout the whole the whole movie. Um, oh my god, it's so great. And then when uh Malcolm McDowell pulls her out of the tube and she's like, "You know what I see? 
the big long booger hanging out of your left nostril. If I was you, I'd use this finger and she pulls out of her middle finger to pick it out. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that was really good. I love I it. Like that. And then uh, one more I have is uh, the changing room scene, like I told you earlier. Yeah, and, that was so awesome. The robot is like, if you follow the instructions, you should appear as so. And then Tank Girl comes out and she's like, lock up your sons. <laughs> I know. I'm like, is that where they got it from 13? Because in 13, so because, yeah. Yeah, she's on the street and then she's like, mothers, lock up your sons. Yeah, so I wonder. Was I was like, oh, shit. And that was made years later, though, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, three. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah totally. Uh, so what your... I wonder. Um, let's see. My first line I have where they say water's life, water's power. Mm-hmm. It's true. Um, I said, oh, my gosh, their house is so cool. Their house in, like, the middle of the desert where, like, she lives with all of her, like, boyfriend and friends and everyone. It's just so dope. Like, I love it. I love everything about it. I love that. Is it, like, a greenhouse outside or something like that? Or... I think they just grow crops okay. like in one area, I, like in one part of it. I love that. Yeah. So cool. Um, and then I wrote <laughs> that fucking, that thing that turns blood into water is. Oh, the little blood. like thing that you put. Yeah. On that it. capsule yeah. thing that like oh, right. kills people and somehow pulls the blood out and turns into water. I was like, that's fucking genius. Right. Both uh, disgusting and genius. <laughs> yeah. Disgusting and genius at the same time. Cause I guess it's like. And also, it was so crazy when they shot the buffalo. He was like, "You can't. It's over. There's a water shortage. Well, You're not allowed to have animals." I shed a tear. I was like, "I know." I was like, "No, yeah. not the fucking buffalo. It's crazy." Um, and then I said, uh, "Okay, the, my first favorite scene is when she first sees the tank, and she's like in love when she like uh stays back when she's a prisoner, and then she oh, like yeah. sees the tank, and then she's like, like I'm in oh love. my god, yeah.'" She's like, "I'm in love." And then she like goes up to it and stuff. Um, and also I said in that when she's in that pipe, she has like those weird flashbacks, just like Ma- the first Mad Max. Actually, yeah. All of the Mad Maxes because same place, Australian outback. Mm-hmm. Um, he is obviously like captor. Uh, Mad Max ends up being captured by these people, at least in the last one and in the first one. And he's left his wife and child like they've gotten taken. So he has all these flashes of them. Yeah. And that was just like what happened to her in that pipe. I was like, oh, this is like Mad Max. We're just having those flashbacks. Then I wrote, okay, so water is in a shortage, but bullets and gasoline are a plenty. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I never understood about any apocalyptic story, even Mad Max, the same thing. I'm like, how do they have bullets and all this? I mean, granted, in the last Mad Max, they were going to get gas. But in this one, I was like, how did they gas this tank Like that she's just taking around yeah. like throughout? Like she would have had to have explained that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Dr. Keesley's place is so futuristic, but yet 80s yeah. at the same time. It's, it's like a so netted, weird. plastic netted like table operation thing. That they have. Yeah. And the water thing that moves yeah. when he walks through it and then it like comes back down. I thought that was so cool. Um, yeah. My second favorite scene is the fashion station at Liquid Silver. Mm-hmm. I wrote all the outfits. Um, um, oh God, Iggy Pop. Why are all the girls constantly threatened with sex assault? And then I said, the Cole Porter song, another one of my favorite scenes. That is a great scene. It's, it's so, so funny because, like, was it the director? I think that she was like, I just wanted to put it in there because I like musicals. Is it the director who said that? Yeah. Oh, that's she, cool. she was just like, I'm just going to do it. Just going to do it. And very like, fifth element. Like, very. Yeah. Well, I mean, this came before that. So I yeah. guess fifth element, I'm sure, probably was like, oh, it didn't make cool. any sense, but it was fantastic. Yeah. It made no sense, but it was so cool how everyone I, knew it. And I love how, like, right before she, like, takes the madam and she's like, put down your weapons or I, or I scrape up all her makeup. And then she's like, look at that. Like, this is going to take a really long time. It's going to take a really long time. <laughs> Then she cut the like hair at the top. Yeah. Like, you oh, want me to sing? <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Reminds me of uh, uh, Ariel in a Little Mermaid when Ursula's right. like, "Now sing," <laughs> and then <laughs> takes her voice and then keep singing. <laughs> and then, like she like takes her voice into that necklace. Right. Oh God, Little Mermaid, great, <laughs> so great. I love Disney Plus. I have to say. Um, it's like so it's changed everything to be able to have all these like old cartoons oh yeah like all the old cartoon disney's which is great and then my third favorite scene uh my last one is when they storm the base and say their calendar shooting anna windor i love it when she's <laughs> just favorite. like 
Shaniqua, don't dally. Yeah. And then she's like, <laughs> you her, her but name. On. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Open your shirt. Open your shirt. Yes, yes. She's like, work it, work it. And then and then I love when they're getting the the photos back. They're like, what is this? Right? Oh, <laughs> like, oh the, the rippers. Yeah. Yeah, the rippers, because they're supposed to be like taking photos of the guns yeah. and like trying to like help them. And then they're like, what the fuck is this? What are we looking at right now? And they're like, I don't know. Look at those guns. And they take mm-hmm. photos of the guns. Um, and then I wrote, whoa, holograph, when he turns into a holograph, Dr. What, Kesley? Oh, Ke- Kesley at the end, yeah. Yeah, I was like, future. The Wizard like, of Oz future. type scene, I love it. Yeah, it's cool. And she like knocks him over. Those are my favorite scenes. That's awesome. Yeah, so what are your what are your final thoughts? My final thoughts is just, everybody, go see this movie. Yeah, go like, fucking watch it. Go, uh, you know, it's on Amazon. Until the end of the month. <laughs> what? on oh, amazon yeah, until the end of the month yeah oh, i didn't see that part yeah um, so go get the dvd own it, yeah, it <laughs> and listen to the soundtrack if you're soundtrack. a fan of grunge at all and 90s music like you'll fucking love the soundtrack so if you can't see the film go see the soundtrack check it out this has been fun this, this is been, a really cool this one. has been really fun don't forget to like subscribe yeah, man, Mike's better at this than I am. I forgot. <laughs> to say it. I was gonna say it in the beginning, and then I was like, "Oh shit, that's okay, no worries." Uh, no. Yeah, like and subscribe. Do all that fun jazz. Please leave us five stars. Write a review on Apple. We love reading them for Christmas or Hanukkah or holidays. Write us a review, please. please. I mean, and, and it's it's just so. And I keep saying this, not to like put you on a pedestal, but no, it, it, you're doing fantastic. this with me. <laughs> but it's fantastic to do this. I mean, just because we're all home and it it, it gives us something to do, like to watch all these movies, to relive our past, <laughs> like, like research. It's cool to. I never research things, so this is cool to find out, like behind the scenes, like who was supposed to do it, the fashion. Like, yeah, and this movie alone, just watch it for the fashion. Like, this movie I mean, is a perfect encapsulation of the title of this podcast, Fashion Grunge. It's got right, amazing basically. fashion and it's got sick ass grunge music for the soundtrack. Well, so, like, and just like we were talking about with Fifth Element, it is a movie of fashion. <laughs> yeah, just- it is. It's really cool. This one is like, oh, also the costume director drug some of the clothes in the desert on attached i jeans. saw that yeah, to like make it look rustic and make it look all worn which is so cool i'm like i wish i was a costume assistant on this movie oh, yeah. like get um, all the trinkets there's an amazing article on dazed that has a like there are a lot of articles about the fashion and apparently how gwen stefani like bit this entire style for like the tragic kingdom era yeah. and um, i know and I, I know you're not a fan of hers now no, okay. really. i still love her but she well, totally did a rip off of tank girl and yeah i didn't even see i didn't even know that yeah. that like it's very heavily inspired but like yeah but more like a like southern california like skater orange county and not as grungy not as like ripped up punk yeah. but uh yeah it's so dope it's so so dope but this yeah is what it, this is what our fashion is gonna look like in the future <laughs> with masks let's hope <laughs> Yeah, literally. Like, this is kind of what it's going to be like when water becomes short supply. That's essentially the only, like, thing that you need to have. Aside from, like, gas and all that. Like, water is yeah. life. Water is life. Water is power. <laughs> and there, there's going to be kangaroo men, apparently. <laughs> yeah, failed uh, Captain America Bucky Winter Soldier experiments all over the place. <laughs> That's essentially what they are. It could be cool. It could be bad. Who knows? <laughs> I can't wait for Bucky's show, too. Yeah. that's gonna be interesting I, I i don't know what the summary really is gonna be about but the team up is I thought falcon was captain america huh i thought falcon was captain america he, yeah he's doning i mean that's part of the story uh-huh. is that gonna be like in the future like this is probably in the past when he was still falcon <sighs> I, well, we don't I know that's justin but i think he becomes falcon becomes the new captain america for a little bit but then there's also a female Captain America oh, yeah, I think I heard as that. well. And I can't remember her name. Crazy. And like her real name is like America Chave or something. Chazé. Oh, okay. Um, It's like 
lady no i can't remember i don't know cool. i don't want to say the wrong thing um, cool. well we'll look forward to it hope you liked our tank girl slash marvel crossover here <laughs> um so yeah it be in the marvel universe if you like marvel shit i mean it's fucking cool it's a pandemic you probably should have watched it by now <laughs> exactly. entertaining. yeah it's just entertaining um yeah so uh thanks for listening and we'll catch you guys on the next one peace bye bye